everybody. It is Cinnamon Cooney, your art shirt. And tonight I'm going to show you how you can paint a boho flower crown unicorn in acrylic. This is a very beginner friendly painting. Uh, all the materials are in the description down below, including links to the website in case you want to use a traceable. I don't ever require anyone to be able to draw to come into my courses, even though I highly recommend it because I think it's super fun. It is not required and tracing is not cheating. How you doing, John? I'm doing pretty good. Are you excited about painting this cute unicorn? I'm excited about, like, recording you painting it. You, me painting. He's got these all over. I have, uh, when we built the original studio, I did one in there with uh, silk flowers. Um, mm -hmm. The walls were never deep enough for us to use. <laughs> it's that building. But I did figure out how much I love doing this, and I've done a bunch for my girls. I thought you might like to have some of these in your life. You can customize them. You can do them on walls. You can add uh, silk florals to them. There are just so many options that you can do, and they're kind of a lot of fun to paint, super beginner friendly. I just love them so much. Now, this one is on a bigger canvas, but tonight we're going to be working an 11 by 14. Not 11 by 14, uh, 9 by 12. Mm. Just a little bit smaller, a little bit easier. Here's some tools that are important to keep in mind. I'm going to be using abstract acrylic paint. I also have, as another word tool you might not be familiar with, a T-square uh, watercolor pencil, and I suggest a fluffy brush for blending. It helps me do the cheek, the There's cheek a, look. A a lot of Dorothy fun. asks a really good question. Mm. What does boho mean? Uh, uh, bohemian. Bohemian. Like in like Bohemian Rhapsody? Yes, but apparently when you're going to Coachella, you don't have time to text out that whole word, so you just boho it. Oh. I don't know. I don't go to a Burning Man. You could just say Queen. Burning Man, not Coachella. <laughs> you just totally go like Garth in the back of a Pinto. I, <laughs> would. I just don't think I would, <laughs> to be really honest. <laughs> so on Friday nights, we like to do a more beginner friendly piece, something that's family friendly, uh, everybody of all level can do. Uh, then the following day, Saturday, we do a more advanced painting, uh, a little few more skills, more color mixes. I do always explain everything step by step so that you can do it at home, uh, no matter where you're at in your art journey. But like tonight, I expect to be kind of a short mellow lesson. And then tomorrow will be maybe a more involved lesson. Now, on our weekend lessons, we like to put wishes on our canvases and send positivity into the universe. So I want to say that Jack Linda is wishing uh, for those, there's some people in her life that were killed by reckless drivers and she is wishing for justice and support and relief for their families. Leslie is uh, wanting a good result from a uh, uh, mammogram and she's like, happy Hooters. I also want to say a little bit extra love for Judy who when saw that wish went up, she personally reached out and I always love to see people try to connect and be you know, authentic and real with each other. That's a very special thing. Something that's awesome about our Facebook group. I know Facebook sucks right now, but my group is amazing. It actually really is. It's very positive. No politics, no nothing, no nonsense. Uh, Nicolette says, oh, this was a really good one. Um, she had a general wish about mental health, and she wanted to send this out there that she knew a lot of people were fatigued right now, uh, feeling overwhelmed, and that this was an important time to hold on that things will get better. And we've been getting a lot of wishes about mental health. So I'm going to say something at the end of this about that. Uh, Hattie is wishing for a new job, but she has something specific. It's not just more money she wants. It's not just uh, a job which she likes. She wants to help people. So if that could come into her life and manifest in her world, she would appreciate that very much. Jill Evans is also uh, wishing for help for her son's mental health. And and also just for others. And I want to say something to this. I'm going to speak a little candidly about my family. Um, when you're online, you're subjected to a lot of really unusual experiences. And uh, so that can get overwhelming. And I can definitely say that the online counseling that's available out there is really helpful. I personally think that BetterHelp is amazing. And I'd like to add, uh, this is a really difficult time for kids. And if you weren't aware, they have a teen online counseling, teen support. And I highly recommend that too. I am, this is not sponsored. This is just, I have had to benefit from this in my own life because I can get overwhelmed. And um, I can't imagine a teenager, my own teenager, all teenagers getting overwhelmed, especially right now. So I, I think that those are good options and they have different price plans. So 
Mm. I realize we're stuck home, many of us, but maybe you didn't, maybe if you weren't aware that that was a thing now and it's a pretty amazing thing, I just wanted to let you know. Uh, Sarah wishes for uh, help, love, and relief from isolation for those in senior care. So she works in hmm. senior care. Oh, your camera just froze on me. Hold on a second. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> you gave this. It was you gave this. I, I was so awesome. It froze. Did you the, did, did my voice go like, through though? It was. It was like. You want to fix were, this? It's really jerky. It is. It's. it's there's something a little. I feel problem. like uh, all your bases are belong to us. There. I'm gonna see if I can. I'm gonna keep an eye on it. <laughs> it's like a 1980s oh, video no. game. My refresh rate is what it no. is. Is I told you I had that can. I, I ordered those new ca- those connectors. You know what we could do? We mm-hmm. could do. We could do not your your face today. We could just do hands, because it could be all. Done. I mean, if that if our oh, stuff is broken and we got to do that, we'll maybe, do it. I've got the two new cables on the way, but I think it's okay right now. Okay, and then uh, yeah, for those in senior care, it should. She says it's really bad. People are wanting to leave, and she wanted me to implore to you. But if you have people that are stuck in senior care, friends or family, to reach out, um, their community is incredibly isolated right now, all over, and uh, anything would help. Is was her feeling, and uh, you know I like to listen to healthcare professionals because they're in it, they're in the thick of it, and they know what they need. So I'm passing that on to you. Let's put our wishes into the universe. I'm going to get a brush. And because this was a watercolor pencil, if I take a damp brush and I go over it, you can see that the wishes evaporate and become part of the canvas. And actually, this helps me prime my canvas, my 9 by 12 artboard. I'm going to try to keep an eye here on this. It looks for, like it's doing okay. I'll try to move less. I'll try to be less entertaining, guys. I think that's the thing. Be less entertaining. I'm going to go ahead and put a little white out on my canvas. This is abstract acrylic. Um, they're a wonderful student grade acrylic, but I actually think they're very high quality. I like to do an extra coat of white on my already white canvas. Yes, I could leave it unpainted, but in my experience, what happens is, is that these canvases are a little dingy Mm. and they kind of attract dust and the little coat of acrylic paint does seem to make a pretty good difference in the outcome and look of the final painting feeling bright and clean. You could go over this with an iridescent fine paint to give it a slightly pearlescent look so there was a bit of a sheen depending on where you were viewing from. So now our wishes are into the universe doing their thing. Let's hope they're doing their thing. All right, I'm gonna dry that off and put that aside. Now to do the next part, I do wanna dry my surface. I recommend you do too. And I'm going to show you how you can use a T-square to make easy work of a unicorn horn, eyelashes, and ears. The symmetry of this piece, which is probably the most challenging part. Um, T-square makes it easy. But let's dry surface. So while she's drying that, I'll tell you guys about... um, What should we talk about today? I don't know. We should talk about something different. Like coffee like coffee it's we're having coffee late no of course i have to tell you about that you can't use heat when drying your surface especially when you're using gesso because uh it will make it soft and sticky and you don't want it to be soft and sticky so make sure you don't use any heat uh, uh because the next layers will uh they'll stick to this like your your brush will stick to that gesso um if it gets hot so just make sure you thoroughly dry it and uh, don't use heat. And so it'll be easy. That little thing that Cin- Cinnamon has her surface on is a little roundabout thingy. And it she spins that around. She'll probably explain that again here in a minute. But that's what that roundy thingy is down there. Let me go back and see. I think that was the other question that I saw in here. Boop, boop, boop. Let's scroll up make sure I got them all. She's all done in there. Now, that roundy thing you have there is the, is, is this, what's it called? Roundabout? It is a Lazy Susan. It is really cute. It's by Pioneer Woman. I got it from Walmart. Uh, please, <laughs> I wasn't telling everyone because I didn't want them to sell out. But I realized these are kind of a wonderful tool and they make nice work of this, especially when I need to work sitting down. 
It's a sh- uh, the reason a lazy Susan can be nice when you're working sitting down, if you're not going to work at a tilted easel, the lazy Susan lets you move the art. So you're not moving your back or neck or body because that's where the real danger is. When you're painting, art's not that dangerous. But if it was going to be dangerous, that would be the space it would be dangerous in. So your, your hope was to get one of those before they all disappeared off the shelves? I'll run out tonight. Probably have already missed that moment. That's true. <laughs> I'm going to divide my canvas in half. Whatever size of surface you're doing, the first part will be to do it in half. So if this is a nine inch, I'm going to come and make a mark around the four and a half inch mark right here. And I'm going to come down from the top and just line up my T-square down from the top. And I'm going to just, I don't want to totally touch my horn, the tab, but I'm going to come down long enough so that I have a, I have some space to draw my horn. Now this is a watercolor pencil. So the color is going to dissipate into my design and this is going to let me get this going. Now our little crown kind of is like a little frown. It's a little surface like this. If I make a very gentle line right here, as you do, I can kind of pre lay in how I want that to go. And again, because it's a watercolor pencil, it will really erase on me very well. This is very light. You may not be seeing that. Coming over about this far from your center mark is when you're going to want to put your ears in. And they're just little upward triangles. I have to tell you, all unicorn ears are different. If you're real concerned about it, though, you can use the traceable. I get that. Sometimes when you've got a project you're really excited about doing, but you're not sure how you will get out of it, okay to use the traceable. I also like to come down from the top and kind of mark in where I think my eyelashes are going to go. So I'm going to come down to about here from there. And this is going to let me say my two eyelashes should be about this far apart. And help to pre-sketch those in just to make sure that I've got that symmetry that I'm wanting as well. So interestingly enough, if you were going to draw this in on any level, that's not that bad. I like to make a kind of pointy little horn. So at first I bring down, imagine it's like two little maypole flowers that are coming down and joining the little curve. And then if you think that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, at least seven segments, because that'll sort of help you get through um, your full rainbow, right? If you're trying to do a rainbow horn. Then I come through and I make this interesting little shape here where I round the horn. Yeah, I bring out these little bumps and that makes it feel like that twisted spiral horn that we're all so fond of. That's all I do in the pre-drawing of this. And then what you can do is you can come back with any little brush. I'm going to take just a little round blender and clean up any of the lines that I don't feel like I really need. You can always go back with white paint later once these are cleaned up. So it's pretty easy to get it all the way back to pristine. And that's the other reason sometimes it's nice to start with a little white because you can clean it up. So a rainbow, right? We're going to put out some purple. I said a rainbow. There's a really fun uh, pneumatic remembering of this. It's a, something about rabbits always do something. Hmm. But basically, it's just RG biv. Yeah. And can tell you some really cool remembering skills for rainbows. I like the Roy G. Biv. I'll talk a little bit about color. We'll make this a, a steam moment. Mm. <laughs> we'll talk a little bit about color and how you can see the color wheel a bit in your rainbow. And I am putting out my colors in order uh, at the top of my 
probably further up than John is comfortable with. <laughs> We're okay. You're just fine. I can see all that. Okay. So I'm actually going to put out one less color than you'd expect. And the reason is, is because these two colors will make the orange. In a rainbow, what you're seeing is your primaries and their half tones coming through. So you will, and then it comes back around as if you imagine in a circle, the purple comes back around uh, into the red. So red and yellow are going to make orange. The yellow and blue are going to make green, and the blue and red are going to make purple. So that's sort of the order of your rainbow. If you think of it, that's kind of what's going on in the color wheel. It's your primary and secondary colors. A guy named Newton figured that out. And some other gravity stuff that people make a big deal about. But I, I say we should pay attention <laughs> to this rainbow thing. I'm also going to put out a little bit of white. And the reason I'm going to put out a little bit of white is sometimes in student paints, uh, not these particularly, but I can't count on you guys having these at home. It can be a little light on the pigment. So if you add a little white, you can easily come in and paint in your first segment of horn with your purple. I'm using my Art Sherpa cat's tongue. You could use a round or a bright. Whatever brush lets you work this space super comfortably. Mm-hmm. That looks pretty good. You got to rinse out between colors or have seven brushes. Whatever works for you. Seven brushes? <laughs> what seven if, brushes. What if you have more than seven brushes? When does, when does a brush collection become an... Never. Okay. Always a collection. Don't Just, even think that you're getting somewhere with that. You're not. So it's just, just collection. It is always a collection. The collection is extensive and thorough. <laughs> or the collection is expanding and growing. Several people were like, aha, I now know how to converse about my craft room. I like to do a dark green and a light green. Ooh. My little horn. Essa wanted to know how come you're sitting down today with the with the rotary table. Well, I'll tell you why. Because there was a lot going on today. I was on the I was on Instagram with Savoir Fair doing a live painting, and we were painting Pierre a portrait of Pierre with Pierre as a surprise to him, plus doing a giveaway. And there was some confusion between John and I about what places we were going to be live. Mm -hmm. and how that was going to be. We worked it out. We worked it out. So we were just like, you know what? It's not a big deal. We're just going to sit down and not worry about it. I'm adding some yellow to that green, and this is going to give me a bright green. I'm on the toe of my brush, and I just like to make sure that those distinctive little donut bumps are showing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This is the whole like secret sauce for the biz. So you want to have that going on. Now I'm going to take a little of my yellow and some red. When I mix them together, I get orange. Oh. Mostly. Unless there's a secret bias in there. And you got to watch but, my color about split primary palettes to that, know why that would happen to you. I gotta wiggle sometimes when you mix yellow oh, and orange. Man. Yellow and red, you don't get orange. Hold on, the camera just went. I, hold on a second. Do you see it? Oh, now it's the other one. Well, I'm painting orange right now. You can't see it. This is all stun hands, just so you know. Turn it off and turn it on. Fucking crazy there. What will happen to me? Will I go away? Ooh, I'm in the void. Oh no! Hello, YouTube. I'm in the void. I used to teach art, but now I just exist in the vacuum of space. Really? What? I should be careful having a sense of humor online. It's not very much appreciated these days, is it? <laughs> Dangerous business to have a sense of humor. 
I have to say, though, the astrophysicists are not a particularly uh, easy to upset community, unless you sit there and argue with them about Pluto being a planet. <laughs> Pretty strongly about that. What? It turned off, though. It's off, off. Is it just not on my monitor? Or is it off, off? Well, if you must. Uh, so, hi, guys. How are you doing? Sometimes when you do live classes online, they go again beautifully, and they're wonderful for the replay, and people enjoy them. Uh, and sometimes all your equipment fails. And you're sitting at the one part of your entire studio that's broken. But look at that. That is the magic of stunt hands. Wait, that's just where we were before. Is that where we are now? See, this is how you know it's live. You don't know it's live if things don't go wrong. And the host isn't cast into space. Luckily, art is a scandalous and entertaining enough subject that I could fill the time, I should tell you. No one ever said to me, oh, girl, you need to talk more. <laughs> now, as I get into the smaller bits of the horn, I'm going to size down my brush because I just don't want to be aggravated. Grr, cables. I'm still going to add a little white to my yellow over here so that I have a nice distinctive value change. <sighs> And I find on the horn, it's nice to do a couple of coats just because. Oh, you know what? I know who. I did but it backwards. You, you did. made a magical unicorn horn of lightness. I, I, what I did was my yellow and my orange are supposed to be reversed. You know what? I can fix it. That could be a vengeance unicorn. No, it's not a vengeance unicorn. No unicorns are vengeance unicorns. Now, <laughs> in the ears, I like to have some pink. This is deep magenta, but it's essentially quinacridone magenta. Listen, guys, you can pick any pink you have. It doesn't have to be a particular pink, especially for this painting. Uh, you just want to have um, something that feels like pink for the inner ear. I need to let this dry for a second. And I could dry it with a hair dryer. But that would be so boring. So I'm going to just paint other things while I'm waiting for it to dry. I'm going to take a little bit of white and magenta and mix them together. And I'm going to get pink. And you might wonder, why didn't you use this red? And I would say, if I use that red and this white, I would get more of a creamy coral or peach than I would a pink because that red has got a very strong, warm bias of yellow in it. What that means is that the pigment itself has a bit of a blue, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yellow. This one is a little more to the blue. To the blue. To the blue. So see, just paint in a little pink here. You can do this. I'm loading up my brush. Notice that I always work from the outer edges of my paint pops. People often say, oh, your palette is so very, very neat. It's because I have a strategy. I'm not a neat person. Uh, I am not organized. Am I frozen again? No, Teresa has a good question, though. Hi, Teresa. How are you doing? Where did it go? I just saw it scroll by. Uh, do, oh, it was Carmine. Oh, or is Carmine compatible to Quinn Magenta? Mm. I never heard of that. In some palettes, it's the closest you're going to get. If you mm. don't have something specifically called magenta, then and the other one is like vermilion, and you have an alizarin, your carmine is as, carmine is as close as you're going to be. So sometimes in some palettes, it's like you're just trying to work out, getting as close as you can while you can. Now I'm going to go ahead and get into my purple. Again, and I'm going to just very quickly come back and put some deep purple on the bottom part of that. And then I make a little highlight of a light purple. I'm doing it. I'm shading it. 
This is a very simple type of shading. And I'm gonna come into my blue. Very fun, I'm gonna come just with my pure blue. This is my, um, it's like a phthalo blue. In this particular set, it's primary, but it's a phthalo. Often phthalo blue is used as a primary blue in paint sets. So you can see that that's putting a nice darker color. And then I'll get a little bit of my white into it. Come in on the other side. See how that goes? Mm -hmm. And just sort of makes a very nice exaggerated little spirally horn. Sometimes I dip my brush in water to improve the flow of the paint. And you can see I'm using the turntable to make my experience of painting a little bit easier. Mm. Mix these two together. Nice little highlight here. Just a light color on this side and a dark color on that side and we're creating shading into our green. Now here on the green, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe off my brush, but I'm not gonna rinse out. And I'm gonna get some pure yellow pigment and come back over. Ooh. And that's how I'm gonna get the highlight for that kind of green. See how that created a brighter green highlight? Yeah. Little tricks. I gotta fix this here though. Or you know what? Let's just know in a real rainbow. Huh. This is yellow, this is orange, that's red. That seems good. You know, we're here It's anyways. pretty. That's it's all pretty. that matters. It hasn't, it's, it's not in trouble. It hasn't done anything wrong. I'm not mad at it. I'm going to come over with some just yellow, and I'm going to mix some stronger orange. Uh-oh, let me spill that cable. Somebody will come by in the comments and be like, Did you know? I'm going to be like, Yes! Yes, we did! I'm frozen again! I'm fixing the cables right now. They're, I don't know what it is. It's so the I'm still cosmic, here. If you see me frozen, I'm still here. Cosmic rays. <sighs> I'm blaming the cosmos. See? I'm going to put out a little more yellow. It this is you... not going to be our most popular video for replay. <laughs> or it will be. <sighs> I'm not sure. I'm going to come here and, oh my goodness, it's frozen again. I'm working. It said uh, no. If you think just the hands will work, go ahead and take me out. Well, I, I don't know. I suppose I don't have that terrible look on my face. <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, look, she's so into herself that she left her frozen face there. Does she know she's making that expression? Do, do you know be what? Like, yes, that I cable do. just gave up on me. To But at least it's a decent look on my face. It's a decent look on my face. Wow, babe. And it just... All right. I've done that second coat on the horn. Enjoy our completely messed up live. You want to boot this one too? I'm going to have a little cup of my owl here. Will I be a black hole in space? A van like I vanish? It'll be like a wonderful life. I can see what the world is like if I never taught art online. I'm still there, babe. I'm indomitable. Let's get some purple while John is working this out. Oh no, now it's frozen in not a good space and my hand is for uh, now I'm goodness gracious, sir. You know, I feel like this is probably uh people are still probably, you know, it's not like your chat is freezing. So you're still getting your social time in. I'm taking a little white over to my purple. You can't see that. I 
So at least you got the chat today. When videos like this, when everything just breaks, um, uh, sometimes we persevere through. <laughs> we just go there. It's YouTube. You don't expect perfection on YouTube. I doubt the recording is smooth, though. We used to say, like, if there was a problem, we would upload the recording. I'm outlining both of the ears with an outline of darker purple. There we go. And now I'm gone. You've given up on me. That, that camera just said, oh, no, you did not. That cable was not good. I'm going to go ahead and put out some black paint. This is in a bottle. It's like craft paint. It's just a very quality version of it. That's just really all it is. So if you just have craft paint like uh, um, Americana from uh, Deco, then you'll be good. So I can explain what happened here. If Okay. I'm going to put this paint on the tip of my brush and make some lashes. I'm going to start with a light pressure throughout the stroke. I'll push down a little bit harder, and then when I finish, I'll release, and that's how I'm going to get a lash out of it. And then I come through here. And I repeat that motion, curving my little brush strokes up and making lashes. You may want to practice your lash vibe on a scratch piece of paper because that's what gets everybody is they like to make great lashes. I'm just brushing some up. Lashes are messy unless they, uh, you know, come in one of those uh, little containers. Pretty good. I'm going to do some flowers. All right. I'm going to load up here. I'm using a number four round, and I'm getting into my blue paint. Let's come up here and do a spike flower. So the trick to this is I go there and then move and then don't go there. The trick is going to be to put out a little bit of a mark. And then a small one. I'm just barely touching the canvas with my brush. And I'm zippering in. I don't know if John can zoom in. I can. Hard to say at this stage. Well, so I have a lot of if control. If anything is possible anymore. Well, so check this out. So I could even do this. See, I can zoom in for you over here. And then I can even bring you back and animate you by hand. So you can talk. No, <laughs> Am I animated by hand now? I think that that's the new look of our thing. As I come down, I'm going to get into some green and even some yellow. And I'm going to add some green to my spike flower. I right, will have sort you of go fun. Back away. That's not going to work. Mm, I think it's good. good. I think uh, it's a very guava juice. Is it very guava juice? I'm going to come over the ear, but I'm not going to totally erase the horn here. Maybe a few more little green bits here and there. And if I want to get into some white to reveal that, with more yellow, sometimes that works really well. As well. I love, I love the, how it's actually f just frozen you in that frame. It's perfect. It's like, oh no, what's going on over there? I think I'll get some no blue idea. and purple to go here. Let's make up maybe a little smaller spike flower. And they're called that just because they're the shape of a spike. This is a hot mess video, my dove. Oh, it happens. I'm going to add some pink and purple. We had... We haven't had a really good technical fall Problem in a while. In a while. <laughs> and like, for, we've been rolling some big technical dice, so to speak. For a bit. I'm going to get for, some white yeah. into here. So those, those cables, I mean, that was a spare cable of a spare cable that was holding that together. And they just both died at the same time. And it just finally gave up, did it? But I, and tomorrow I have two new ones that were, that were coming in. I mean, I, I ordered them knowing that this was going to happen at some point. Well, are are we on these cables tomorrow? Are we on the standing ones? Oh, no. Well, the other cables are 
on the, on the other ones are different. These are just the hand scan cables. Ah. But I've got two brand new ones tomorrow. And like, here I was, thought I was being nice to you when you were like, I thought it was hands. I'm like, all right, I'll be cool and groovy and do it hands. Okay. So I'm doing a similar stroke, and that's what's making the leaves. I just touch the brush and pull, and sometimes I add a little curve to it. And that's all I use to get some of these better little leaf moments. And the leaves really help uh, kind of say that this is a wreath or a flower or something. You can bring these right in front of the ears. If you need to put water into your brush to improve the flow, you can. You bring a little bit of them. And you can see how that just frames in the ears so they look like they're part of the crown. Uh-oh. I had a boo-boo. What's that? Right here. Oh, that's all right. That's okay. I will. What I'll do is I will use white. And I've got to do cheeks anyways. I will make this go away. Ah, <gasps> no, that was It won't there. be a big deal. <laughs> so we got that going on there. I think that's looking pretty good. Let's make um, something sort of cute and yellow and going down off the other side. Now these are like these are more like little bell flowers. I make little petals that are three together. Are you being funny with me? Okay, if you are. I still love you. Adding a little red into my my bit here. And I just like to give these just maybe a little moment. There we go. And those can just sit there for a second. I need to dry this so none of the wet paint goes anywhere else. And John can examine any more of his tech that he wants. And right. my animated self that he is probably enjoying very much. Okay. So I'll let her I'll let her go back over to the corner while we're drying. So, yeah, sorry about that, guys. We had a little cable malfunction there. Um that's one of those technical things where we have, uh, we run all our cables using a system, a broadcast system called SDI, which is these really thick cables, and the connectors on them are not really forgiving to be like pulled on or kicked or anything, which happens a lot in our studio. So those cables. Uh, put, put me back and do the thing again where you're animating me. This is a live art class. John, we got to teach art online live. This is going to be so much fun. Let's help people paint. <laughs> I'm crazy with kids. It is really. Okay, fine. <laughs> when your picture in picture fails, make your wife a cartoon. I say, why not? That's what I say. I say, I say. I'm going to grab a little purple, a little pink. And then I'm going to make some star flowers. I will pull some petals in. And I'm going to take advantage of the fact that my table turns. And at this point, you're like, okay, <laughs> the dogs are. Just, <laughs> I think you should have to move me every time one of the dogs bark. Well, that wouldn't make much sense, would it? Huh? That it wouldn't make much sense if the if, if you. But move... maybe I'm barking. Well, but you're not. Oh my goodness. That was very very. Opportunity. Uh, that was a good opportunity. Yeah, well, they happen. I think you could have had me barking. You could be like, "She's, she's, she's barking." Even like my dogs are barking. Could have done little skits. I don't know. I feel like sometimes we miss these moments. 
I'm mixing the pink, purple, and a little bit of white just to make sure that these are bright and enjoyable. I'm just painting them around. If you do one stroke flowers, it lends itself to this particular design. Yeah. So, you know, go crazy and enjoy. I think it's fun to bring in some deep purple every once in a while, a few places, just to add some pizzazz and interest to the whole thing. And then, you know, I think it's fun to do some roses. Let's get into our pink and maybe a little bit of our red. Oh. So it's our magenta and our red and then a little white. Let's zoom that out a little and bit. And let's come here. We're going to do a curved stroke. And then a curved stroke to its friend. And then another bigger curved stroke. And then maybe I'll get more magenta. Another bigger curved stroke. And you can see that starts to build up a rose. It's like laying bricks. Hmm. See, give yourself a little rose there. And come here and maybe make another little one here. A little curved stroke. A little friend. Uh, that turntable wasn't specifically for painting, was it? No. <laughs> I don't think that's what they intended it for at all. I think sometimes artists go, you know what this be great for? Turntable, my art, so that I don't have to have, like, such a frustrating time. Maybe make a bigger pedal there. I just want to make this one bigger so they have some scale. And then we could certainly fit one in here, I think. Just adding those petals in a sequence around. Oh my goodness. That is looking pretty good. <laughs> Are you animating me every time I talk? Me? You're like, otherwise this would be the most boring show ever. But look at this woman's head bob. Somewhere there's a cat going crazy there right now. Be. Kitty, 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 kitty. Somewhere there's a dog going crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to add a little bit of white to the base of my canvas. And the reason that I'm going to do this, and I'm going to get a nice square brush to brush it out, clean water, is I want to do some dusted cheeks. And you can see why I was like, if I touched up that little boo-boo earlier. Mm -hmm. And this is also why it can be nice to paint it with your titanium white ahead of time. So this next technique works easier. Because I want the paint to be here and wet. Not sopping wet, not a pool, but just a thin sheen of not yet dry paint underneath the eye. All right, so that we can do the little blush cheeks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a smidge of my pink and a good amount of my white. And I'm going to come under here with this big fluffy brush. This is a oval mop. And that's how I get the very soft blended pink blush under. Not great. That looks really good. That's how you get that. And if you want to blend it out further, then you just rinse your brush off, have it be slightly damp. Which brush is that? This is, well, this one actually says ultimate varnish. Yeah. But what it is, is a mop brush, an mm. oval synthetic mop. I love this one. It is my favorite, but there are others, and they are also okay. You can see, come back and just blend that even more. Little dustings of cute pink. You can just decide how pink you want them to be. And that's just really about your taste on what strikes you as particularly cute when you're doing this type of design. Right? If you're like, oh, very pink or not very pink, you have a lot of control over it. I just rinsed off again as John animates me. I'm so 
so really touched that he's animating me. I feel I'm just lucky that the camera froze on that frame. I mean, it could be worse. I make some crazy faces. We all know it. If you've like, never been here before and you're like, what is this hot mess? Normally, the me- well, no, our mess is still pretty hot all the time. But normally, <laughs> you know, I'm talking. True. I'm going to add some white and yellow centers to my purple flowers. Make them violets. Kind of fun to do. Anywhere I can put those little purple and yellow centers is really fun. I'm going to add some green leaves. A little bit of white. Make some nice different green, but still green. And I'm going to come here and add a few of these to the flowers that are coming down. And anywhere I want to fill, I might add a little leaf. If I'm like, oh, there's there's an opening there. Something needs a fill. Now, when this is over and you painted everything in, you have an option to add glitter. There are all kinds of glitter paint and gold paints. Uh, know that most metallics are fairly transparent. So you really have got to find a glitter paint that you like. This is my favorite. It is a crazy amount of money. This is Chroma Pearl Yellow. It's a ridiculous amount of money. Um, but it's a very good one. There's uh, Iridescent Fine by Golden. It comes in craft paint. But also there's some pretty good metallics in the craft section of your art store. So don't feel like you've got to run out and grab that. I'm going to come under my eyelashes and glitter them. You can kind of see that glitter happening there. You'll see the glitter come and go. I like the chameleon. Sing the Boy George song in your head right now. And then I'm going to come around my horn and add some glitter to it as I go. You know, you can check up. Uh, all around and you just want something that gives you a result so you can kind of see the shimmer now maybe add a little bit of that to the shimmery of it i think it's nice to come to the inside of the ears and glitter them a bit oh you really can see it that yeah so the metallics and interference paints all work best over a dark color is where you really get to see them shine and be amazing. And they are amazing. And they get to be over a dark color. And come in and let's. I like to just, I don't know, imagine these are sugar plum fairies. And come in and add several glitter petals and really, you know, frost everything and sparkle it up so that. Wherever this goes, it has that extra special little feel about it. And I'll just touch different things. And you can see as I touch them and the light hits them in different places, how the, the reflection works on them and how it shows. So in some places, it'll, it'll show a lot, and in others, it might not show as much. No, but it's always fun. Adding a little bit of that. And don't worry, I'm about to put poor John out of his misery. Oh, yeah, why is that? <laughs> because everything is breaking on you. Oh, it's fine. Just adding a little bit of gold to the... And you can see the paint's still a little bit wet, but it doesn't hurt it. So you can see how that really turns that into something special. And then we're going to come here. Tomorrow, don't worry, we will be fully, technically, totally together. It will be a perfect show. We'll have it all worked out by then, <laughs> I am sure. And then I'm going to go knock on wood to make sure that's true. <laughs> I'm going to get a little pink on my brush. I'll come here. Uh, I want to thin it with water so that it flows. 
I could sign with the black. Yeah. But that's such a heavy color that it'll take over the whole piece. See, now that you're almost done, I feel comfortable wiggling a cable. <laughs> you feel comfortable wiggling the cable? In case it, like, gives you your camera back. I don't, don't. I, I, it's been a crazy face the whole way. That's a, you know, I don't know that my face isn't that uncrazy during regular times anyways. So we'll turn this so you can see the different shimmer. At, so you can see how much that impacts it in its effect. Right, and you can kind of. There you are. Nope. It just nope. Made, it nope. Just changed. I'm not there. <laughs> it just I'm made not bad there. face. Here, I'm going to I'm gonna do my goodbye and you shake me all around, sir. Well, it, it gave you a not fun face. It said. Oh, okay. No. Well, what are we going to do it now? Changed. Well, now what we're going to do is you're going to you just tell everybody how much you like them. Well, thank you very much, you guys, for coming today. I don't know why my camera broke. It did that. It did that mean thing to me where it does that. It says, oh, look, you did. You got a hand. You know what? I can help you with that, I think. No, no, it's okay. I'm Be ready to go. I'm going to do the goodbye with this hand. Okay. Oh, I, I, but I hand painted a thing. I did. I hand painted a thing. All right. You're not even on camera. All right, John has decided to outstunt hands me, but I'm going to art this up because I feel like I've been a pretty good sport. See, look, you were so unimpressed with my hand. You're that, see how impressed you are? You're this unimpressed with my hand. So. Stop it. <laughs> I got to give myself makeup. <laughs> All right, <laughs> and makeup. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I would like to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.